I'm a venture capitalist in New York. I invest in early stage tech companies. Thanks to Shark Tank, I don't need to explain what that means. We've all seen the basics, at least the TV version. The eager entrepreneur makes the pitch. The judges pepper the entrepreneur with questions and decide whether to invest their money. And it's all about the money. Or so it may seem. While the money may grab the headlines, it's really not the point. I know, this may sound surprising coming from someone who studied finance in undergrad and again when she got her MBA. But if you watch closely, you'll see. What entrepreneurs are really looking for is what money can't buy. Connections to suppliers, distributors, and customers that investors can bring to the table. Business, particularly in a company's earliest days, depends on these relationships. That means investors looking to partner with the most capable founders have to offer more than financial capital. They have to offer connected capital, relevant people, and networks that can grow their businesses and increase the entrepreneur's chances of success. Connected capital is the capital that you don't find on the balance sheet. For a vivid example of this, let's look to the earliest days of the largest network ever, Facebook. For those who watched the movie The Social Network, you watched a young Mark Zuckerberg meet Napster founder Sean Parker. It was Parker, the serial entrepreneur, who saw the potential for Facebook to rise from a dorm room startup to a global titan. Parker connected Zuckerberg to the founders of early internet companies who became early Facebook investors. Pioneers like Mark Andreessen, Peter Thiel, Reid Hoffman. Mark Andreessen started Netscape while he was in college and took the company public before he was 25. Peter Thiel and Reid Hoffman started PayPal, and then Hoffman went on to start LinkedIn. These veteran entrepreneurs provided much more than money. They provided know-how to get Zuckerberg's social network off the ground. Zuckerberg benefited from connected capital. His capital came connected to something even more valuable, a network and guidance on how to navigate that network. Connected capital opened new information and new networks for Facebook. But what I'm talking about is bigger than Facebook. The venture industry is changing. Yes, money still helps, but not all money is created equal. Most people believe that success is a combination of talent, hard work, and luck. That last factor, luck, is far more important than I ever imagined, especially for early stage companies. Luck doesn't happen by accident. Your network determines your luck. Your network can get you access to opportunity and exposure. It can connect you to talent, to capital, to partners. That means founders building tomorrow's Facebook are looking for investors who offer more than financial capital. They're looking for investors who offer that connected capital, new networks with new connections that can help grow their new businesses. Again, founders are evaluating investors for the capital that you don't find on the balance sheet, the people. Some of you might know the New York-based startup, The Wing. 
the wing runs co-working spaces specifically designed for women, complete with childcare, a library filled with women authors, events focused on women's leadership. But its goal is greater. The wing's mission? Advance women through community. The result? Thousands of women waiting to sign up. And for good reason. If you ask any of their members, they absolutely love it. Now, an organization dedicated to advancing women. Sounds kind of like a nonprofit, doesn't it? Not at all. Since starting just a few years ago, the wing has raised over $100 million from investors. And not just any investors. For a company committed to women's advancement, it was important to find women investors. So, the wing recruited notable influencers, like the creators of Time's Up, the US women's national soccer team, the founders of All Rays. These leaders, now wing investors, are the who's who of their industry, not by accident. The Wing's mission extends way beyond tech and venture capital, to connect women at the top of their fields across Hollywood, in public policy, and in sports. The day the company announced their funding, these investors took to Twitter, promoting the Wing to their followers. Millions of new potential members learned about the Wing in an instant, adding to that already long wait list. Armed with Twitter, these connected new investors reach people in minutes that might once upon a time have taken years. The secret ingredient? Not money. People. People and their connectivity. And the wing is not alone. If you've ridden a scooter in the past year, you might know a company called Lime. Lime started just a few years ago and has already gone global, operating in over 100 cities around the world. This was particularly handy when I was in Paris last summer, riding around the city like a local on a Lime scooter. To fuel that growth, Lime has raised over $700 million from investors. You might be surprised to learn that one of those investors is Uber, yes the ride-sharing company. Now, why would Lime take money from Uber, a potential competitor that could launch its own scooter fleet? Well, during the scooter wars, Lime needed an edge. It needed a unique distribution channel that competitors would struggle to replicate. So, Lime hitched a ride on Uber's app, and guess what? Lime leaped to become the preferred scooter company for millions of riders who use Uber's app. Lime tapped Uber's network to instantly connect with customers that otherwise may have taken years to reach. The scooter wars are still raging, but so far it looks like connected capital has made Lime the industry leader. Which brings me back to my job, my job as an investor at NextGen where people are worth more than money, which is what brought me there in the first place. When I was in business school, I never heard of connected capital. It wasn't something that they taught us in our finance classes. But when I met the NextGen team, I saw that they were doing something different. The money that they offered entrepreneurs was just a fraction of the value. The real value was in the connections that they offered to help entrepreneurs grow their businesses. And I thought it would be great to get in on the ground floor. Since then, NextGen has grown to over 1,000 entrepreneurs and executives. Now, to be clear, NextGen does not have 1,000 employees. Far from it, we're a team of 11. We could all fit in an elevator but we managed to reach across the entire country. How? Through our network of 1,000 part-time venture capitalists who offer their connections and their expertise to the companies that we invest in. 
One of these companies, a company called Unsupervised, used this connectivity to build their sales pipeline. Unsupervised uses artificial intelligence to analyze customer data for Fortune 500 companies. It used our network to shortcut this notoriously long sales cycle and instantly connect with decision makers at global leaders like DaVita, Expedia, and General Mills. Just one more example where people, not money, deliver the greatest value. When I was in school studying finance, I hit the numbers hard. That meant many late nights falling asleep over financial statements. But what I've learned since, as I said at the top, is that the real value doesn't show up on the balance sheet because the real value is people. People are worth more than money. The wing looked for investors with shared values more than big money to unite different groups behind the company's single mission, advancing women. Lime tapped a potential competitor's network to instantly connect with customers that otherwise may have taken years to reach. NextGen uses its network to open doors for portfolio companies while they're still on the ground floor. All three examples show entrepreneurs are looking for investors who offer more than just money. They're looking for, uh, they're looking for investors who offer connected capital that allows them to grow their businesses. So, entrepreneurs dream up and invent products to build a better future. Partnering with the right investors can help them build that future faster. So, whether you're building a company, or you're running a nonprofit, or you're managing a team, just think, are you surrounding yourself with the right investors, advisors, mentors, who can bring the right people around the table and help you build the future that you envision faster? What other people or groups can you convince to share your goals? Then you can create your own example of where people are worth more than money, much more. Thank you.